A violent, admitted liar who left the church in 2005 following an investigation into his extensive waste of church funds. He abused others, including his wife. Who is Tom DeVocht, and why would anyone trust him? You do get paid and you do get attention for doing this stuff. I don't work for free. I mean, I'm just a crappy has-been actress who's trying to make a dollar off my church. In a quest for relevance, unemployed sitcom actress Leah Remini has partnered with cable outlet A&E to create a bigoted hate show featuring what Remini calls her people, a small group of bullies, liars, and con artists. Imagine Remini's delight when she came upon a man who embodied all three, Tom DeVocht. Leah Remini refers to DeVocht as a sweetheart. She couldn't be further from the truth. Tom DeVocht is little more than a money-hungry construction worker kicked out of the Church of Scientology nearly two decades ago in disgrace for financial malfeasance lying and physical assault. The guy was really nothing, and he pretended to be something, and he tried to pose to be something, but he was nothing. And the truth is, Tom DeVock was just a criminal. He wasn't anything more than a con artist who really wasn't very smart, really wasn't able to pull things off, was quite low IQ, and so he would con his way through things. During his time in the church, Tom DeVocht chronically overstepped the bounds of his authority, creating a series of financial disasters and hiding it for years. Tom DeVocht messed up a lot financially in the church when it came to construction renovations. Uh, there were two specific projects I was involved with. To say, I guess, that they didn't go well was an understatement. He had left this trail like slime, things that had to be rebuilt, replanned redone, refigured out, re-researched. And through his incompetence, because he, he didn't have a clue what he was doing, so he'd never get planning approved, never get budgeting done. He would just go ahead with projects and then constantly change them. I had the assignment of tallying up all the change orders for one of these projects that he was working on, and it was astronomical. Over expenditures in the terms of hundreds of thousands of dollars in one particular building. He had given authorization for things to be done that were not approved by the board, and it was very evident he was dishonest. And he thought he was above the law, and when caught out on such, he would lie. Bills would be coming in and he would cover them up. He was a financial nightmare. Before Leah Remini's sweetheart was caught and fired, Tom DeVocht talked his way into supervising some of the church's building projects. Among other financial misconduct, DeVocht secretly and by his own admission, signed contracts worth $10 million without authorization to hide his own lack of planning. Committed to a multi-million dollar loan guarantee, sticking the church with the tab when the loan defaulted engineered a disastrous land deal benefiting a convicted felon that cost the church a million dollars. But DeVocht got a perk out of the deal. He scored tickets to a pro football game. All from a man who would later disclose this about his stunning lack of moral character. Lying was not wrong unless I was caught out and couldn't lie my way out of it. And when piles of bills and internal audits made it impossible to hide the truth any longer, DeVocht admitted all in a public announcement. I operated insanely, spending money with no responsibility for what I was doing and no concept of the destructive consequences. A closer look into the life of the man Leah Remini calls a sweetheart reveals an orgy of antisocial conduct. DeVocht stole cash from his bride's grandmother on their wedding day. He sold two of his wife's cars without her knowledge and spent the money on himself. 
I arrived back home and my girlfriend picked me up at the airport and we get to my apartment and I get out of the car and I look and where my car's normally parked, it's not there. And I turned to her and I say, where's my car? And she just went totally white. And she looked at me and she goes, he didn't tell you? I said, what are you talking about? She said, Tom sold your car. You didn't know? While I was gone, Tom sold the car. He never told me. Just took it out, sold it, spent the money. And he squandered $100,000 of her inheritance without bothering to mention it. I had quite a big inheritance from my grandmother, and he would just spend it. And I'd turn around, i go, where'd, where'd all that money go? He would take and take and drain off others, like a vampire sucking blood. He never apologized. He never was wrong. It was always I was making a big deal about things that weren't really a big deal. But it was a big deal. Want to hear some truth from the cash-hungry con man? I would never even consider I was doing wrong unless I was caught out. And then my only sorrow was for being caught. But Tom DeVocht not only stole money from women, he also knocked them around. I said something he didn't agree with that had to do with our work. I think I had a ponytail at the time and he grabbed me by my hair and whipped me around a corner and dragged me down the hallway, literally like a caveman, until people noticed and they just went running after him and tackled him. Now, this I am not someone who's ever experienced violence. That wasn't something that was normal. Men don't hit women. That is just doesn't happen. So you can imagine my shock. And that was the end of that marriage. But far from being remorseful about his violent streak, which extends to attacks on several colleagues, Tom DeVocht actually boasts about it. I drove fear into people with my physical handling of people, he said. I beat up some people. Tom DeVock's criminal resume would eventually go beyond financial malfeasance and unhinged violence and into suborning perjury, coaching colleagues to lie to authorities, then hiding it for years. An accomplice? Leah Remini's co-host, Mike Render. Once DeVock's lies and antisocial acts were discovered, the church's leader immediately dismissed him in disgrace. Tom DeVock's bitterness at being dismissed would fuel a vendetta against the church and its members, including a deprogramming attempt against a young church member visiting from Australia. Lured to a house where she was held against her will, threatened and verbally abused by DeVocht and others. The more that I was to not agree with what they're saying, they'd get angry. What, you think you're tough? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You think you're tough, huh? You're gonna listen to me. You're gonna listen to me and you're gonna do what I say. And that minute I knew that like something was wrong. Like I was scared. Then they will come outside and now I'm cornered, you know, cornered in the sidewalk of the house. So then Tom DeVuck comes out. And he said, if you were my sister, I'd tie you up right now. And that's that's what freaked me the hell out. I mean, you'd tie me up because of what? Because I mean, I'm a Scientologist. You have, no one has any right to do that. But nothing would quell DeVock's bitter crusade for revenge over the good life he lost. And so, DeVot next turned on his own family. My brother, Tom, professes to be a family man. However, he contacted my own daughter and tried to separate her from me. He got her so upset that she was actually confused about whether or not she should stay in touch with me. It was extremely upsetting, and it took me quite a bit to get it sorted out. And this was such a shock to me because Tom never, ever, ever cared about what was going on with her, like never. Who would put a lying wife beater on air to present his hallucinations as fact? I mean, I'm just a crappy has-been actress who's trying to make a dollar off my church. A money-hungry has-been named Leah Remini, another con artist just as fanatical as Tom DeVocht. And of course, the sleaze merchants at Economy Channel a and showrunner Miles Reef, producers Eli Holtzman and Aaron Sedman, and a and &E executives Paul Buccieri, Rob Chernow, and Elaine Frontaine Bryant. 
the church provided them all with ample evidence, declarations, statements, and taped depositions, proving that Tom DeVock spins lies like a rabid spider. But Remini and a and &E ignore these inconvenient facts because the truth would spoil DeVock's admitted scam. He wasn't able to keep up with his cons. He started lying so much that he couldn't remember what lie he told to who. And so he started getting tripped up and he got caught. And he wasn't used to getting caught. He was used to lying. He started doing the same thing after he left the church that he was doing in the church. He ripped off money from his brother. He ripped off money from so-called friends. He conned his father into giving the entire inheritance to him and ripping off his sister so she would get no money. He has no other life than being a criminal. That is what Tom DeVock is. He's a con man, he's a liar, he's a criminal. Leah Remini and Tom DeVock have a lot in common. Remini tried to extort the church for $1.5 million. DeVock is doing likewise. Tom told my father that he is going to continue to attack the church and he will not stop for any reason until the church pays him off. That's extortion. That's blackmail. Leah Remini and Tom DeVocht, two money-hungry trolls trying to cash in on hate and bigotry. Brought to you by A&E.